Hello there. Hey guys, it's Mr. Gonzalez. This is me. Hello. Okay, this is the first time I'm using this as a review. Um, I just thought I'd give it a try to make a movie like this, a review movie. Um, so we can sort of like write together if you're writing notes. So let's try it. Let's see if it works. Okay, let's go over what's on the test. The first thing you have to understand is sort of uh, the main thing about reproduction is it's all about genes. It's all about DNA. So we sort of did this in our notes where we talked about where is this? And the first thing is what does this stand for? We said it stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And for your test, you don't have to remember that. You just have to maybe be able to recognize when you see it, what it stands for, D-N-A uh, here. What I mean by that is, is this will probably be a multiple choice where you pick DNA stands for which one, okay? Now, where is DNA? DNA is in each and every one of your cells. In each nucleus, there is a bunch of chromatin. And chromatin is what your um, genetic material is called when it's this crazy bunch of spaghetti like this. Okay, so it's called chromatin. Now, the chromatin eventually condenses into chromosomes. And it does this when it's going to divide either into mitosis or meiosis. And a chromosome looks like this. It looks like that. Oh, look at that picture. It's perfect. Um, we've been doing this a little bit. Just like that. And this is a chromosome. So inside you have chromatin, which condenses into chromosomes. And this is a chromosome. Okay. Now the little red marks are genes. And uh, our genetic, each chromosome, we have about 10,000 genes or so. And uh, 46 chromosomes. 46 chromosomes, 10,000 genes. That means there's a bunch of genes on the chromosomes, okay? A lot of them on there. Um, so just know the order as well. Know that cell is the biggest, then nucleus, then chromosomes, then genes is the smallest, and then DNA. Because genes are a piece of DNA. So if I'm looking at this, this might be a gene piece of DNA that codes for something. So this could be maybe for, uh, I don't know, your how much your thumb curves. Look how cool that picture is. Okay? All right, that's it for that. All right, so just as a review, this right here, we have a lot of vocab here that we've been reviewing, reviewing. You should be good at this already, but I'll do it really quick here. This little stripe right here is a gene. This right here is a centromere. These two together are the homologous chromosome pair. Why do you have a pair? Well, you get one from mom and one from dad to make you. And remember, we sometimes have been using random numbers, like we call this eight. And I'll talk about what that means in a second. Um, these two right here are, you guessed it, sister chromatids. Okay, uh, the little genes right here, if you notice, they've there's crossing over took place. So there's crossing over. Uh, this dad one exchanged material with mom one, and they sort of exchanged material there. Okay, so this is where crossing over occurs between uh, the chromatids on the opposite uh, pair. Okay, now what is this eight about? Well, that eight is the number of this pair. I could put any number there from one through 22. Um, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, with 1 through 22 being our autosomes. These are the non-sex chromosomes. And we have one pair, because there's 23 pairs, we have 23 pairs of sex chromosomes. And I'll show you that right now, here. This is your karyotype. Karyotype is a picture of your chromosomes. This represents all the chromosomes in one cell. Why, we talked about why a, a karyotype would be made. One, you can determine sex of the baby very early on. You can also see if there's any genetic mistakes, like if pieces of chromosomes are missing or if a child has an extra chromosome. 
Okay, so that's a karyote. And this is where I got that eight from. I just randomly chose pair number eight and I pretend it was them. Okay, so they each of the pairs has a number. This is pair one, and if you notice, they're in size order. The last pair are your sex chromosomes. And what were these called? We said it a second ago, your non sex ones or your autosomes. Okay, cool. So that's our karyotype. Mitosis. Now, reproduction uh, can be growth, can be uh, repair, like of our uh, skin tissue. And mitosis is basically taking, I'll do it very simple. I'll do, you start off with a chromosome like this. And the first thing that happens is DNA replication. That chromosome has to totally replicate itself like this. And then what happens is that will go into metaphase, which is uh, lines up in the middle, and then they're sort of will divide like this. Okay, metaphase into anaphase into telophase, and you end up with this. If you notice, the babies, the offspring, are the same as the first one. Okay, so on uh, the website I'll put the little movie which shows all the phases that go through there. Uh, but just to review really quick, interphase is a non-dividing phase, so it looks sort of like this. Prophase, three things happen. The nucleus starts to break up. You actually get to see the chromosomes. The chromosomes condense. And then you get like the spindle fiber starts to form from these two little organelles called centrioles. Oh, that looks like a face, doesn't it? Then metaphase. And metaphase is, I'll draw two of them in this one so you can see what happens. Metaphase, they line up in the middle like this. And then, sorry, I forgot the E. Anaphase, the sister chromatids divide in anaphase, sister chromatids split up, and then in telophase, the cell begins to form two cells, the pinching of the two sort of forms, and you end up with that right there, and then eventually cytokinesis. And cytokinesis is the final pinching and separation of the cytoplasm. And that's mitosis. Result, 100% uh, identical uh, offspring. We had examples of, we had bacteria do something called binary fission. And this is where they sort of just do mitosis. They split and make co copies. We have vegetative propagation check your notes for spelling, but this is like strawberry plant where one you can plant one plant and it grows a clone of it next to it under the ground. Uh, budding, our example was the hydra, which sort of a little baby buds out of there, pops off and is a clone. So this is mitosis happening here. And the last one is regeneration, and the famous of course is the starfish, uh, that if you sort of chop off uh, an arm of starfish. It grows a new arm, but what's cool is sometimes the arm grows a new starfish, which gives you a whole new organism. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so that's examples of mitosis, of asexual reproduction. Okay, now meiosis is a little different. Meiosis actually isn't reproduction. Meiosis is making the sex cells, which will eventually be in reproduction. Okay, uh, first thing with meiosis, it happens in two places. Let me get rid of this. This is actually from the notes in class, one of the classes. I just decided to use it so I wouldn't have to um, copy, redraw all this. All right, a couple things about meiosis. One is it's making the gametes. Your gametes are your sperm and egg. Oops. And gametes. That's number one. Makes the gametes. Number two, it results in. My pen is going nuts here. In, uh, sorry, haploid cells. Okay. What does this mean? This means that if you start off with 46 chromosomes, you're going to end up with haploid cells. Haploid cells have half of the chromosome number. 
So the normal number for our cells in our body is 46. The haploid number, which means half, is 23. This full set of chromosomes is a diploid number. Okay. So you start off like this. You start off with the, the homologous pair, the mom and the dad, mom and the dad. I put a 1 there and an 18 there to show you that this is pair 1 and that's pair 18. Then DNA replication occurs. Mom doubles, dad doubles, mom doubles, dad doubles. The first thing in meiosis is the homologous pair is going to, maybe they'll cross over. The first thing that's going to happen is they will split. And so you'll end up with um, chromosomes, a homologous pair on one side, and another homologous pair on this one. So mom on that one, dad on that side. Now just know that not all the moms go one way and all the dads go the other. You can have recombination, which is like, it, they can go either way. So moms can go that way and dads can go that way. Okay? And what you end up with is two cells like this. See, I put the dad one here and the dad one is here. I made them separate so you could see that. And this gives you more, the crossing over gives you more genetic variability which is awesome. It gives you four different cells. So if I were to draw the four sperm that are made, then uh, basically what would happen is this right here would be mom. This would be mom with a little bit of dad over here. And then dad's little guys. Okay, you saw what I did there? I just split this in half like that. And then this would be dad's with a little bit of mom genes on there. And you actually end up with four different combinations, which is why you get a lot of genetic variability, a lot of difference in the child. So that's meiosis. All right, let's do male reproduction really quick, the parts you need to know. This is the testes. It's held in the scrotum, and the scrotum controls temperature. The testes need to actually be outside of the body to be cooler. Um, the scrotum can actually move up and down depending on what the temperature is. This is the epididymis, epididymis, and it stores sperm. This is the vas deferens, and it's the tube that, the vas deferens, it's the tube that sends um, sperm out um, from the, the testes out. And this actually loops around into this tube, which is the urethra. And in males, the urethra is both reproductive and excretory. That means it's, it sends out semen, which has sperm, but also um, urine, because this right here is the bladder. And so that's how a male uh, pees. And then there's a lot of like little glands and stuff. You don't need to know any of them except the prostate gland, because it's sort of famous for, uh, you know, in males, uh, can, can get cancer of the prostate. And it what the prostate gland does is it, it provides... Um, some of the um, uh, fluids needed in semen, which is the liquid that's held, uh, that holds sperm, okay? I think that's everything. This is the rectum back here, but pretty much know these here, okay? This is female sideways. Uh, it's a little more confusing. Let me see. see let's do female front first. Um, the vagina here, the cervix is in the back. The cervix is an opening. Please know what passes through the cervix. It's not urine. You can have blood that passes through with the menstruation. You can have a baby that passes through. You can have sperm that goes up. Okay, so those are the things that pass the cervix. This is the uterus right here, this organ. This is the uterine lining, also known as endometrium, but you don't need to know that. Just know the uh, uterus lining, also known as uterine lining. This is your ovary, where all the eggs are, and then eggs get released into this fallopian tube, also known as an oviduct. So you'll see it as both, or you can name it as both, okay? Uh, that's pretty much it there. And then sideways is a little more confusing, but when you do a sideways diagram, the first thing is find this right here, this loop. This loop is the uh, uterus. This right here is ovary. This is the uh, fallopian tube or oviduct right there that goes around into there. This is the cervix. This is the bladder. It goes down to the urethra. Urethra is urethra. This is where the female urinates. And this is the bladder. This is the rectum anus over here. Vagina is here. And that's it. 
Okay, so the sideways view is a little more, more confusing. If you need help with that, you can see me. Okay, uh, da -da -da, we did that. And last thing is the menstrual cycle. <sighs> okay, so I'm actually going to redo this diagram. This is the diagram we got to in class. I'm going to finish it in class, but I'll also redo it now. Um, this represents what's going on in inside the ovary. Uh, I'll show you what happens throughout the month here really quick, and then I'll show you what happens in the ovary. So each month an egg sort of matures right here inside a little bag called a follicle. And it uh, each month a female ovulates. That means she throws out an egg. Let's use a different color so you can see it. And so there's the egg. She ovulates. Woo! Egg flies down. Whee! If there's sperm around, this is where fertilization occurs. If there's no sperm, whee! Egg travels down, attaches itself. And if there's no sperm, then the egg and the walls of the uterus die and get shed in menstruation. Okay, so that's the whole cycle of what's going on. Um, we're going to look inside here now, though, to show you what's going on in the ovary. And that was this picture, which is awesome. But I'm going to redraw it so you can see what it looks like. So we'll go on this. Woo! Uh, I started over here with just a little egg inside a follicle. I called that number one. This is called the follicular phase. Oh my god, it's spelled so wrong. A race! Oh gosh. I went too fast. Oh gosh. There we go. Sorry, I'm going too fast. I have a class in three minutes. Follicular phase. The follicular phase is where the uh, their hormone called FSH causes the egg and the follicle to increase in size and mature. After that, you get, bam, whoo, ovulation. Ovulation is the release of an egg each month. Now, what's cool is this little sac that's left behind actually becomes this weird cloud thing, this yellow blob. And the yellow blob is called the corpus luteum. And this is the luteal phase. And the luteal phase is where a hormone called progesterone is released. Now, progesterone's cool because it prepares the female for pregnancy. Progesterone is released by the corpus luteum. Now, if a female is not pregnant, by the way, this thickens the uterus lining so she can accept the child. If not, then it dies, and this is where menstruation happens. So one, two growth, three ovulation. There's another hormone involved here. It's called uh, LH. Uh, LH, a big spike in LH causes ovulation to occur. And then corpus luteum releases progesterone. Progesterone totally thickens the female uterus uh, so to prepare for the baby. If there is no baby, the uterus, this corpus luteum dies and the walls of the uterus die and um, get shed each month. Okay? Whew. All right, so that is a super, super quick review of our notes. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Good luck, guys.